Hello and welcome back. Now it's time for the first practice exercise of the PLC basic course. Let's get started. First, let me explain how the exercises will work. The concept is simple. Now it's your turn. In the first step, I will explain the task. For this exercise, you need to expand the control panel of the tank system. If you are watching this video on my course platform, you will find additional files available for download below the video. For example, a TA portal project file with all PLC tags already set up and the factory AO file for the tank simulation. However, you can still complete the exercise without these files, but it is more work for you. Once I have explained the task, it's your turn. Think about a possible solution and how you want to structure your program. Your next step is to develop the PLC program on your own. For the best experience, use a TIA portal, PLC sim and factory IO to create a full simulation. If you prefer not to use factory IO, you can still simulate everything using PLC sim alone. If you don't have access to the TIA portal, that's not a problem at all. At worst, just grab a pen and a paper and write down the program manually. It's not perfect, but it's still much better than doing nothing. In the final step, I will jump back in and explain you my solution. I will also show you how to test the program using factory AO or PLC sim. Alright, let's get started with the task description. Our goal is to program a simple tank filling system. To do this, we only need AND as well as OR logic connections, which we've already learned. The tank is controlled using this control panel. Let's take a closer look. This switch turns the system on and off. If the system is off, nothing happens. All indicator lights remain off and the tank cannot be filled. When the system is switched on, we can open the valve by pressing this button. While the tank is filling, the indicator light in the button lights up. The current tank level is displayed using four additional indicator lights. This is especially useful when the tank is not visible for the person who is controlling it. The current level is detected by four capacitive sensors. Unlike inductive sensors, capacitive sensors can also detect non-metallic objects and fluids. When the first sensor is triggered, only the first indicator light turns on. When the second sensor is triggered, the first two lights turn on, and so on. I have also added a lamp test button to the control panel. When pressed, all indicator lights turn on. This allows us to check if any of the lights are faulty. The best way to explain this task is to see it in action. So let's switch over to factory IO. Thank you so much for learning PLC programming with me. If you want to take your skills to the next level, visit my website. Join my full online course and start your journey as a PLC programmer. I would love to have you on board. Here is our tank and here is the control panel. If the system is off, nothing happens. The tank cannot be filled and all indicator lights remain off. Once we turn the system on, we can fill the tank using this button. The filling process is indicated by the button's built-in light. On the side of the tank, I have placed four sensors that detect the current fill level. The indicator lights on the control panel displays a level for the operator.
All indicator lights in the control panel can also be activated using the lamp test function as long as the system is turned on. Alright, I hope you have followed along so far. Before we start programming, we need to define the inputs, outputs and PLC tags. Let me show them to you now. We start with the inputs. Here are the PLC tags for the input signals. I've connected the system on-off switch to input I0.0. .0. The tank fill button is connected to input I0.1. The four sensors for the fill level detection are connected to the next four inputs. These are normally open contacts. The lamp test button is connected to input I0.6. Now let's look at the outputs. The valve is connected to output Q0.0. The indicator light for the fill button is controlled via output Q0.1 and the four indicator lights for the fill level display are connected to outputs Q0.2 to Q0.5. Feel free to take a screenshot of this page. This is all you need to start creating your program. Now it's your turn. Time to build your first program independently. Good luck and happy programming. I will see you in a moment. Welcome back. I hope you were able to solve the task on your own. If not, no worries. I will now show you a possible solution which you can use as a reference. But before that, an important note. If you give 1000 PLC programs the same task, you will get 1000 different programs. So if your solution looks different from mine, that's totally fine. There isn't just one correct way. There are many ways to achieve the goal. The two most important things a PLC program must fulfill are First, it must work. And second, it must be well documented so others can easily understand it. Keep that in mind. Alright, let's get started. I will now show you my program. I have structured my program into seven networks. The first network only handles the data exchange between PLC SIM and factory AO, so it's not relevant for us. You will notice that I have created multiple networks with minimal program code. That is just my personal preference. You could also implement the entire program in a single network, but I find that makes it harder to read. Now let's go through the networks one by one in online mode. This network controls the valve. If the machine is switched on and the button is pressed, the valve opens. The indicator light inside the button is controlled the same way. Additionally, I have included the lamp test function as an OR condition. By the way, you can reuse the same input multiple times in the same program without any issues. However, using an output multiple times can cause problems and should be avoided, especially if you are new to PLC programming. The indicator lights for the tank level display are controlled by their respective sensors in combination with the on-off switch. I've also included the lamp test function as an OR condition for each light.
All right, everyone. As mentioned before, you can program this differently if you prefer. This is simply my solution approach. Now let's switch the programming language to FPD. There shouldn't be anything new here. I will fill the tank for you so you can observe the program in action. Looks good so far. Now I will create the same program in SCL. Feel free to try it yourself and then we will go over it together. All right, everyone, I've now written the program in SCL. Here it is all packed into a single network. Of course, you can split the program into multiple networks if you prefer. I kept it in one network because I want to demonstrate a few things. First and foremost, SCL code is generally more compact than LAD or FPD. You can clearly see that here. In my opinion, observing and troubleshooting the program in online mode is more difficult compared to graphical programming languages. As I've mentioned before, a good PLC program must do two things. It must work and it must be well documented so others can easily understand it. In SCL, you can insert comments like this. This is a great way to improve clarity and make your program easier to understand. If you need to add more detailed explanations, you can also use multi-line comments. Another useful feature in SCL are regions. Regions allow you to organize your code more efficiently. For example, we could group all indicator lights into their own region. Now the indicator lights are placed in a separate collapsible region. This helps improve readability, but of course it's not mandatory. Let's go ahead and test the program. SCL is an incredible powerful programming language. However, for simple bit logic, I personally prefer graphical programming languages. I find them easier to read. I recommend exploring it yourself and deciding what works best for you. If you don't want to work with factory AO, you can simply use PLCSIM to test your program. I've already shown you exactly how to do this in a separate video. But please note that you should not use the factory AO project template if you are working with PLCSIM alone. You won't be able to simulate the program with the SIM table. And that's it! We have reached the end of our first practice exercise. 
If you manage to solve it on your own, congratulations. You are among the top 10% who have a natural talent for PLC programming. If you didn't solve it, welcome to the club. My first programming exercises never worked on the first try. But don't worry, practice is the key to mastering PLC programming. So don't be sad if things don't work right away. That's completely normal. I'm looking forward to see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're excited to dive deeper into PLC programming, visit my website at plccoach.com. See you in the next video.